Welcome to Librarian Recommends. Hi, my name is Trish and I'm one of the librarians at Barbican Library. And whilst the library is closed, I'm going to bring you some suggestions of books to read or listen to via a Librarian Recommends session each week on a Thursday. Whilst you're unable to come into the library to collect books, you can download ebooks and audiobooks using our free RB Digital app. If you need help using the app, please take a look at our how-to video, which you can find in the video section on the left of this Facebook page. Or go to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and just type Barbican and Community Libraries into the YouTube search box and select the top search result and you'll find our user guide video there. Today, I'm gonna to concentrate on books to celebrate London to mark London History Day on the 31st of May. This event is always on the 31st of May as this is the date that Big Ben first started keeping time in 1859. So I have a selection of fiction and non-fiction books that is centred on and around London for you. Firstly, I'm going to mention some e-book titles that you might be interested in trying. My first suggestion is London in Chains by Gillian Bradshaw. This historical fiction novel is set in 1647, after the First English Civil War. Its protagonist is Lucy Wentnor, a young lady who, after being attacked by soldiers in a raid on her family farm in Leicestershire, is sent by her father to London to live with her uncle and aunt. Feeling unwelcome, she eagerly accepts a job as a printing assistant. She soon finds herself running an illegal printing press, a dangerous undertaking which could lead to her imprisonment. This meticulously researched novel paints a vivid picture of the capital in the 17th century while telling the story of a woman finding independence and love. Next is Greater London Murders by Linda Stratman. This is a unique collection of 33 real life tales of murder one from each of the London boroughs, taking us from Barking and Dagenham all the way to Westminster. The author details heinous crimes from the past that not only horrified the capital, but made shocking headlines across the country. Some are notorious, others less known. The entry for the City of London deals with the Siege of Sydney Street, a gunfight between police and member, members of a Latvian criminal gang. This is a great book which would especially appeal to true crime enthusiasts and readers interested in the shady side of London history. How about Literary London by Eloise Miller and Sam Jordison? This is a fascinating guide to the literary life of London from the 14th century to the present day. The authors take us on a tour around our great city highlighting the places that played a part in the lives and works of the greatest names in English literature. We are led on a tour through the streets of the metropolis, learning the literary significance of various buildings, landmarks, stations, squares, pubs, theatres and churches. This is an informative and entertaining read showing precisely why, as another famous local writer opined in 1777, when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. My final e-book for you is the SW19 Club by Nicola May. Left heartbroken by the miscarriage of her twins, the adultery of her husband, and the devastating news that she can now never have children, Gracie Davis needs solace and support. So she moves in with her hippie chick sister, Naomi, who lives in Wimbledon. Gracie soon makes new friends there and she seizes a new business opportunity and establishes the SW19 Club. Here, women meet to talk openly about their experiences of infertility and other reproductive issues in a fun and supportive environment. The club is a source of healing and inspiration to Gracie as she builds herself a new life. This is an easy, touching and enjoyable chick lit read. And now on to some audiobooks. I know people are often reluctant to give audiobooks a try. I was many years ago and now I'm hooked. 
Being read to is a different experience to reading, but it's very enjoyable. So why not give it a go, especially as it's free? So my first audio book for you today is called Londoners, The Days and Nights of London Now, as told by those who love it, hate it, live it, left it and long for it by Craig Taylor. This is an insightful book about London and the people for whom it is home. It is a collection of over 80 interviews with a wide range of people who live and work here, as well as some former residents. Over a five year period, journalist and writer Craig Taylor, a Canadian now residing in London, captured the stories of ordinary Londoners. The voices in this book are diverse, honest and authentic. The interviewees work in a variety of professions, from cleaner to police officer, city planner to rapper, taxi driver to dominatrix, hedge fund manager to beekeeper. The book explores what it means to be a Londoner through the real life, funny, sad, shocking, fascinating and unique experiences of its inhabitants. How about The Resurrectionist by James Bradley? This is the chilling tale of Gabriel Swift, an ambitious young anatomy student who arrives in London in 1826 to study with Edwin Pohl, the city's most renowned anatomist. This is Gabriel's chance for advancement, but instead he finds himself fascinated by Lucan, Pohl's nemesis and the most powerful of London's resurrectionists and the head of its trade in stolen cadavers. This is a world where everyone and everything has its price, and as Gabriel discovers, a place where the taking of a life is not as difficult as it may seem. This is a mesmerising and unforgettable gothic tale that beautifully evokes the fetid, gloomy and sinister heart of Georgian London's underbelly. Next up is Man's World by Rupert Smith. This novel is a story of two gay lives. One lives in the London of today and one in the London of 50 years ago. In modern day London, we meet Robert, an openly gay, muscular, shallow party boy who tries to find fulfilment in a world of sex, drugs, fashionable gay clubs and designer clothes while documenting his experiences on his blog. In an earlier era, we meet Michael, a closeted homosexual, finishing his national service in the late 1950s and trying to navigate his way in a secret gay underworld in a bid to find love. Past and present collide when Robert moves into the same block of flats in which the now elderly Michael resides. Although the two men have lived in very different worlds, they are both seeking the same things, love, acceptance and a life worth living. This is a charming, funny and poignant story about how some things change and how some things stay the same. My final audio book this week is A Private Business by Barbara Nadell. A thrilling crime novel about an unlikely detective duo set in East End London. It's 2012 and London is preparing to host the Olympics. In the Stratford streets, in the shadow of the new Olympic Park, but in an area untouched by the money or regeneration bought by the games. Lee Arnold, a former police officer, is trying to establish his private detection business with his assistant, Mumtaz Hakim, a Muslim widow from the local Bangladeshi community. Lee is hired by Maria Peters, a notoriously foul-mouthed comedian famous in the 1980s, who is convinced that someone is following her and has unauthorised access to her home. Whilst under surveillance, Lee and Mumtaz learn more about Maria's life, and it soon appears that not only is she hiding something, but her case is more complex and disturbing than the pair first thought. This book has a compelling plot, great characters, and paints a colourful picture of the impoverished Stratford East. I do hope you enjoy these ideas for your next read, even if you haven't thought about reading books about London before. Why not give something new a try? You might be surprised. And don't forget, if these titles I have suggested are unavailable when you look, you can search by genre and availability in the RB Digital app. 
do use the comments section below to add any of your own suggestions of books featuring London that you think our readers or customers might enjoy. And if we don't already have them in our RB Digital Collection, we will see if we can add them so you can enjoy them again. Before I go, as always, I would like to thank my colleague Lynn for her invaluable help in putting these recommendations together. Please do stay safe and healthy and we'll see you next week. Bye.